Robin, it's your boy Black Yonce, and you watch your All Urban Central. Gang, whore. What's good everyone, it's your boy Yidig, 4 eyes 2 gs here, reporting today for All Urban Central. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about Lil Baby's colossal rise, putting it in context in regards to his label situation with QC right now, where he is kind of taking over the Migos as a spearhead and as a priority artist of both their labels, Quality Control. Now firstly, it's important to say, if you guys don't know, at the end of the day, labels are a business, and just like any business, it's all about return on investment. So labels will give preference to and prioritize certain artists over other artists if they feel they can get a higher return on investment make more money from them etc etc it's basic business you guys probably know this already now it's also important to say that Lil Baby is of course a solo artist whereas Amigos have three members this means that even if Baby and Migos were earning the very same money just by nature of how the splits go QC are earning less money off the Migos because they would get less splits as a result of them having three members now there are three major factors at play here I think at least first of all it's Lil Baby's huge rise as I said second of all we've also seen a bit of a downfall of the Migos, not necessarily saying they've fallen off or they're irrelevant, but they definitely haven't been as successful as they have been in the past, and I'll break down the numbers for that in a second. And third of all, the lawsuit that just came up in the middle of July, which I'll break down for you guys if you haven't heard about it, I think that plays a crucial role in this as well. First of all, let's begin with the artists and kind of compare and contrast their numbers. First of all, let's begin with the Migos. Of course, we all know Migos kind of broke through to the mainstream pop world in late 2016 and early 2017, with their huge hits like Bad and Bougie and T-Shirt, and then they were able to follow that up successfully on Culture 2. And across these two albums, they were able to get seven certified hits. However, compare that to their situation now, keeping in mind Culture 2 was released two and a half years ago at the top of 2018, and across 2019 and 2020, they've only had one certified hit, and none of the four singles they've released in 2020 have gone platinum or gold, and they've all failed to reach a top 40 placement on the Billboard Hot 100, which kind of speaks to the lackluster commercial performance of their music right now. Now, however, compare this to Lil Baby, where in the same period, Migos have only gotten one certified song, Lil Baby has gotten nine of them, with seven of them coming in 2020 alone. Now, of course, it is a fair point to make that Lil Baby has released an album, My Turn, which did extremely well in 2020, and as we know, Migos have yet to release a new album, but still, I think the point kind of stands, because as I said, they've tried four singles in 2020 now to try to gear up for the project, try to get the ball rolling, but none of them are connecting. Whilst on the other hand, as I said, Baby has gone crazy with seven certified hits in 2020 alone, and his album received 1 billion streams by March 2020 alone. Now, I say that all to say to kind of link it up to the label and the investment point I made a bit earlier. If you're QC in this situation, and on one hand you have the Migos who have historically been your mainstay artists, your biggest artists who have always done crazy numbers, but now they're not really performing that well, you've tried a few singles and they're not really connecting in the same way, and you're not really seeing that return on investment from them, then on the other hand you have Lil Baby who just puts out nothing but hits and is given huge return on investment. Plus, this is on top of the point I made earlier, where of course QC gets better splits on Baby because he's a solo artist compared to the three of the Migos. So considering that situation right there, again, if you're QC, you're way more likely to put more money into Baby, treat him more as a priority artist, because at the end of the day, you're just seeing better return on investment. And again, labels are a business and they care about the money at the end of the day. So that's kind of like the broader narrative we're seeing play out right now. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we haven't seen a new Migos project as I said since the top of 2018 with Culture 2. Even though it was meant to come in 2019, then it was poised to come in April of May this year, we still haven't seen it being released and I think both the success of Baby and the lackluster commercial performance of their singles plays into why we haven't seen an album. Labels really only want to release albums when it makes financial sense for them to do so. If QC release a Migos album now, considering the fact that the singles haven't really been doing well, they're probably going to flop and the numbers won't 
don't really come back that good because that bigger mainstream audience just doesn't know about their newer music because it hasn't been connected on that bigger level. So QC are probably taking it slow. They'll try another couple singles, see if they can get a hit out of it and get their Migos back on top. And then they'll release the album then because more people will be tuned in and it's more likely to do the numbers and get that return on investment they're looking for. Now, last of all to mention is a lawsuit, as I said. Now, I'm going to be referencing this article by Ashley Collins of The Hollywood Reporter, quote, Migos sue talent lawyer over excessive fees conflict of interest, which came out on July 15, 2020. And before we get onto that, guys, I just want to take a quick second to say a big thank you to All Event Central for allowing me to feature on your channel. If you guys don't know, I'm a content creator myself and I have my own YouTube channel with similar videos like this. The link to my YouTube channel and my Instagram will be in the description if you guys want to check it out after the video. All Urban Central reached out to me to see if we wanted to work and I thought, why not? So again, big shout out to them. It's a huge opportunity for someone like myself, but let's get back to Baby and Migos. Now, I do want to say this video will not cover all the information super in depth. Of course, it's an article regarding legal situations, so it's impossible to include everything in a short 10 minute video or something like this. So I suggest you read it in your own time, but I'm going to break down the most important bits concerning this video right here. And the meat of the article really revolves around the Migos lawyer, Granison. Now, Granison works for the Migos and quality control. Now, of course, this presents a conflict of interest because Granison is meant to do what's best for his parties. And in this situation, his parties are both the Migos and quality control. But there might be situations and decisions that arise that make both these duties impossible to fill at one time, which presents a conflict of interest. And Granison, in this case, allegedly, according to the report, saw Migos as, quote, easy targets and co-ops them into a one-sided deal for the benefit of a higher priority client quality control music. And notice the wording of that article, quote, a higher priority client, which basically translates to Granison getting more money from QC than he does the Migos. And this just makes sense because obviously the business of Migos is a subsidiary of the business of QC. Now, why this is important to mention, because at the end of the day, Granison is just a lawyer whose top priority is probably just to make as much money as possible. So if he has two decisions in front of him, one for QC's benefit that he gets paid more to make, and then one for Migos' benefit that he gets paid less to make, he's probably just going to make the decision that benefits QC because he gets paid more and he doesn't really care about the art. So this presents a conflict of interest, which apparently led to Migos getting, quote, cheated out of millions of dollars through excessive commissions and bad deals. Now, why this is so important to the whole baby Migos QC discussion is because think about it. If you're a label, you're responsible for releasing the music, promoting the music, marketing the music, overall, just spending the money you need to, to ensure that artist success. However, in this situation, if you're QC and you're getting sued by the Migos who are an artist on your label, what kind of motive do you have to really put effort into the releases, into the promotion, into their marketing and really spend that money? If at the same time, that very same artist is suing you, causing you to not only lose money because you have to pay for lawyers, etc., etc. On top of that, the negative press resulting from articles like this hurts your public image and tarnishes your name. And third of all, the time and effort you're spending on this lawsuit and talking to lawyers, etc., etc., is time and effort wasted that could have been going to working on the label and working with other artists. So yeah, circling back to Migos and Baby, again, what motive would you have in this situation as quality control to really put your best foot forward in regards to the Migos career? You probably wouldn't have a lot. Again, that is an assumption, but compared to someone like Lil Baby, who isn't suing you, is a solo artist and is having more success, you would probably be more likely to not only spend more money on Lil Baby, but put more time and effort and overall just prioritize his success over the Migos at this point in time, considering all the factors I laid out in this video. Overall, it's a really interesting situation going on. However, it isn't a good side to see. Of course, we all know quality control were like a family unit. We saw Baby, we saw Migos, City Girls, Yachty, etc, etc, kind of move as one and they really gave this image as a family unit. So it really sucks to see. Plus, on top of the lawsuit, we've gotten a couple interviews from Lil Yachty, who obviously is signed to QC, and also a Migos interview where they talk about Lil Baby, where it's pretty clear that tensions are high within the QC camp right now. I'm going to play this Lil Yachty clip where he's talking about the state of QC right now during his recent interview with Everyday Struggle, and I think it's really telling. Make sure to pay attention to his body language and his facial expression as well. Look, I think it'll always be a family, but it's not, we don't, like, it's, like, we don't, it's not like how it used to be, you know? It's like, so it's just like doing this thing, you know? So we, 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 uh, 
<laughs> oh man, <laughs> uh, yo, yeah, 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 just gave him more by his body, his body language than answers. And then on top of this, as I said, we saw the Migos get asked about Lil Baby's rise and his success in a super recent interview with Peter Rosenberg. Again, before I play the clip, just make sure to pay attention to their facial expression and their body language as well. Lil Baby dropped a, a, a great record last week. I, I was proud of him. I thought it was an awesome topical record. Uh, have you been impressed and, and, and proud of his moves? He's been he's been doing his thing, man. He's become the guy. The show. Did you hear the, did you hear the record I'm talking about? Uh yeah. The the um it was just topical, man. And as you can see right there, they didn't exactly seem thrilled about the success of Lil Baby. And it's pretty clear the tensions are high, particularly between the Migos and Lil Baby, probably because the Migos are a little bit jealous of Lil Baby's success, considering the current state of their career. However, that is just my speculation. At the end of the day, between the Migos and the Yodi clip, it's pretty safe to say that QC as a whole is in a pretty distraught place right now, and they're kind of disconnected internally. And hopefully this can be sorted out behind the scenes amicably, where everybody can get the best result possible. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. What do you think about Lil Baby's rise? Do you think the Migos can bounce back and have another hit? Let us know in the comments.